The Modern Jeeper Show, the show about Jeeps, Jeeping, and Jeepers. Well, hey, Modern Jeepers, it's another episode of The Modern Jeeper Show with me, Matt from Motor Cloak, and Mr. Modern Jeeper, Corey Osborne. Hey, buddy. Hey, and Rockstar Jeep Girl, Jesse. Hello. Well, hey, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. I know. Happy Thanksgiving and ha- week. Happy ab- well, Thanksgiving. Ab- well, this is, we're recording this on Tuesday, but of all of our fans and listeners, we'll see this Thursday morning, Thanksgiving morning. So to all of you guys, happy Thanksgiving. We're better than the parade. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to have to put on my, 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 this, this is Thanksgiving week hat. Yes. Um, not, I mean, that- I put on this hat because I'm cold. But um, <laughs> this is um, it's been a day. It's been a week. It's been a, week a month. already. Yeah, I, I'm um, I have a list of of things, and um, you know, again, it comes back down to this is Thanksgiving, and everything that we do wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the folks that are following us, listening to us, think that we have something um meaningful to say, which nine times out of ten we don't. I I don't think we ever do at all, quite frankly. No. I, I'm just a ranter. <clears throat> I, I heard once somebody say today, or it was on a podcast was yesterday, that he finds like this is a you know billionaire guy named Chamonth, and he is his uh, the guy who sits in the room and says nothing for two years and then says something profound once is more valuable to me. Than the guy who talks all the time. Ah, I, I no, I'm like pennies on the floor. <clears throat> Wow. <laughs> that is, um, that is really, that is, that's, me. that's super profound. I mean, <laughs> um, you know, when, and you and I, it, that's a struggle because we like to talk a lot and <laughs> yeah. it may not make a, a, a real difference to anybody that listens to us. Um, but we sure like to, we like to hear ourselves and we like, we like to think that our, the ideas that, that come through us and are valuable enough to, be spoken out loud like there's something to be said for that um i don't know i man the last couple of days have been really really interesting how how about for you are you is there some kind of weird full moon thing going on no man like my mine has been like last week planning for our black friday sale to start on saturday at the biggest sale we've ever done with the highest uh, discount for suspension we've ever offered at 15 percent off plus the giveaways but what i've done is i got so much marketing going on with it right now like letting so much of the world know about it that i created a lot of work for myself and i, and I <laughs> for all of you guys out there I, I appreciate it but it's like i have seven different forums that i'm i'm monitoring related to this you know and every day posting new on those forums i've got the website i've got the blog i've got the the videos i've got all the stuff that i create to all for the purposes of of marketing and letting the world know about the sale because uh, you know i don't want somebody to call me on tuesday and say i didn't hear about it right you know so it's like here this is it we're gonna make everybody know there's gonna be no excuses when you get to the end of the end of the sale and you go oh i didn't know that no no i'm doing everything i can to make sure the world knows about it and we're giving away thousands of dollars i mean as of this morning as of this morning i'd given away forty five hundred dollars in gift certificates um and it and to to a wide variety, I think we're at what is it? 10, 10 people have received gift certificates since we started the sale. And that was just in the first three days. Another thousand dollars will be given away tomorrow morning for today, and then another whatever we decide to do the rest of the week. And guarantee you guys, if you're listening, Black Friday is the biggest giveaway of all. I mean, it's a huge amount of money that we're giving away on Black Friday, um, and it's, so it's on top of everything else we're doing. So that's what mine is. I'm just all consumed into this, right? There's no time to think about anything else other than the fact that I've got a, uh, I'm designing a calendar. I got some ads running that I got to design. I've got some other things on my list that is here. Like I still got to get my Jeep smog. I mean, I got other stuff. Oh, and your truck needs to get smog. We just got, I mean, it's like little things on top of that, but I'm like, but it's all consuming. So I don't have time to think about now come next week. I'll be like, what the hell happened? Yeah, oh, it's, and I, and I, I, um, you know, again, this comes back around to that. Um, oh, we've talked about this in episodes past, where uh, putting yourself in somebody else's shoes and kind of understanding their perspective, I think, is we've we've so lost that because we just want, we know what's important to us, and we're all about getting our list done. And you know, uh, the other day, um, yesterday, as a matter of fact, 
I took the new truck and I went to the recycle center here in Montrose. And um, <laughs> I gotta tell you, I took that guy a ton of cardboard and a ton of paper. And Don't the whole time I'm the, the whole time I'm doing it, I mean, I'm looking at the guy who's who's having to, you know, they they bind this stuff up and it it goes into a real recycle center um and i'm thinking to myself i'm just giving this guy more work and it never ends it never ends but you're helping because while i'm there four other trucks pull in and they're dumping off all of their stuff that they don't want anymore whether it's bottles or newspapers or cardboard or whatever it is and i thought man what a relief for me I just got all of this cardboard out of my garage and I'm doing the I'm doing the right thing, right? And this guy that works there, maybe on the positive note, I'm I'm giving him um something to do. Uh, I'm pretty sure that he's always has something to do. I don't know. It's it's an interesting thing to me. Like what, am I creating a job for someone? so that he can bind cardboard. And when it's all gone, is he like, oh, phew, now I can relax. No, no, there's another truck pulling up with a bunch more cardboard. And it's kind of that way with emails, with everything that we get ourselves involved in. And and Mattson, I know for sure that I, I know how Jesse and I's days go, and I know what we do, and I know how much planning goes into stuff. and you're getting barrages from not only, hey, by the way, you're you're running a sales team and a marketing team and you have this business, but then there's all these outside things that keep hitting you on at random times that we need to kind of go, oh yeah, I need to do that too. Like, so to prioritize it all, I don't know, man, today was one of those days where I was, I was literally when I, from when I woke up this morning, I was kind of fired up and um, I, we're used to things being easy and and they're not anymore. Things are complicated. And when is the last time that you agreed to something and it said, hey, you must first agree to these terms and conditions? Right. Yeah, 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 man. I, I'm, I'm all in. Like, I just want to get to the end result. I need this app. I need this program, whatever it is. I'm going to agree to these terms and conditions, this update, whatever it is. Yeah, I agree. What'd you, what'd you just agree to? Uh, well, I don't know. Well, when you call that company later and you have to go through an hour of being on hold and, and then they say, well, well do you agreed to our terms and conditions. And you kind of go, did I? Well, yeah, yeah, I did. So it said in there that you will be on hold for two hours, no matter what. Like, do we know that? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, it's again, we agree to things that we don't even pay attention to. We, we try to blow through stuff. We, we want to be, I don't know. I'm, I think that metal cloak is a, the, 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 what am I trying to say? The best thing about customer service is when you can call somebody and you can get somebody on the phone. I was on hold for one hour the first time and then another hour the second time when I tried to call Dish. Yep. <laughs> you finally did it. I got through. Got through. And I, the second time I'm like, I'm I'm determined. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a hold of somebody. And you know what? When they finally answered the phone. It was very simple. I just wanted them to go away. Like <laughs> it's, I just don't want to pay you anymore. It's not that big of a deal. I just, I just don't want to pay you anymore. And the gal was like, oh, we completely understand. When would you like your service to stop? I don't know. Tomorrow's good. Okay. Well, it's done. You couldn't do that online? No, they no, you, you can't no. because they want to get those people in, in those Hey, well, let us make you a deal. Um, yeah. We'll lower your payments. We'll reduce your, let's reduce your channels. Let's, I'm like, look, I'm never home. 
stop making me pay for something that I never watch. And they were like, oh, cool. It's done. Done. But that never happens. They have no. a retention department. You get right. one person. And we're going to have to transfer you over to the retention over. department now. Yeah. Sir, yeah. sir, we're watching you right now. We have a sniper on your <laughs> it's, You do not want to trust us, sir. Trust us, sir. You do not want to drop this. Sir, now, you've already agreed to our terms and conditions. Yes. And did you read really the lines in the terms and conditions? It does say that we have the right to take you out if you refuse to pay payment. <sighs> Hot tub. You know, there's a lot to unpack in what you did like in that little rant. It's like today's episode, today's episode of Modern G Print is Corey's rants. <clears throat> but there's a lot to unpack there. You, you you mentioned the work, like creating the work. And it's I listened to, we've talked about it before, Mike Rowe, Dirty Jobs, and and his his foundation that has that actually gives re- rewards for people for having a work ethic, right? And a desire to work. And it's one of the inter- most interesting things because I hear this now more and more especially then we've been in this this two years where we have a high you know a low unemployment but a high jobs availability and it's not because of the fact that there are people that there is people not working because unemployment just counts for the people that are simply trying to work but aren't working it's how many people have divorced themselves from the workforce mike Rowe talks about an interesting statistic and of these millions of people that have decided not to, a huge percentage of them spend hours, like six to seven hours in front of a screen a day, right? There's this, and these are, and they're really, and I hate to say it, but they're really focusing on the men's, the man workforce, the man force, right? Um, because the man force, all the things that we depend upon, power lines, recycling, you know, these, these, these industry jobs that have been the core bread and butter of our nation, mechanics, you know, delivery drivers, whatever, the core bread and butter is our mechanics, the dirty jobs of the world, so to speak. These are the jobs that are going unfilled in many cases. And partly it's, if you go back, there has been a definite educational push that says to every one of our kids going to school, when you graduate, you've got to go to college because college is the key to having respect. College is the key to economics. College is the key to be a part of our society. The guy out there doing the cardboard, he didn't need to go to college to do that, right? And mm-hmm. he could probably make a decent living doing that, right? The guy the guy climbing the poles to fix the power lines doesn't need to go to college. For that. The guy cleaning the, the to doing the plumbing, one of the most honorable jobs out there, plumbers and, and, and the garbage man, all these jobs that are important for our society, they didn't need to go to college for that. But they're told that if you don't go to college, then you're less than those right. who do go to college. That's right. And what has disappeared is a vocational education, especially here in California. Like shot class, I mean, it's just, it's just, they're not going to spend the money on shot classes anymore, right? That kind of stuff is disappearing. You still get into some parts of the country. Massachusetts still has an incredible education system um, that includes uh, journeyman training. Like when you graduate from high school, you actually have a vocation. You're already a journeyman because you decided to become to study plumbing or these other things. But this is work. And, and, and we get so used to being a society where things are just given to us. The idea of getting up and working. What am I going to do? I'm going to work on something. I am going to fix something. I'm going to build something. I'm going to get my hands dirty, right? Um, as opposed to, well, you know, you could have just have easily taken all that cardboard down to a dumpster and dropped it off and said, and just, you know, and just burned it. I mean, just I, burned it or whatever. I mean, you could have that done... is that is so. Yeah, we're wow. Talk about a rabbit hole. I mean, we are we are in the cusp of our our world of you can choose, uh, which is is kind of different. You can choose what you want to do you right. can choose to take it to a recycle center i could have just burned it we have a big fire pit i burn a lot of stuff um i could have just burned all that but no i'm i'm doing i want to do the right thing and and the people that are involved are again i i well and, and this is going to all come back around um by the end of our podcast but really it's all about the people that we Oh, that we interact with through every single day. And we we get to decide. Uh, like you just said, you know, you can go to school. You don't have to go to school. The people that don't go to school, like we, we've created these 
these paths that we think that if you don't do this, then you don't fit into what it turns out to is you don't fit into my guidelines. Mm. It's, it's the folks that are running these, these large organizations or, or, or groups or whatever you want to call it. Um, social media has become uh, a real, a real uh, hindrance hindrance into that because we we're all comp competing with each other which that was if you think about the uh, the origination of social media of facebook it was just so we could keep in touch right with our friends and family now it is about making sure you understand my political perspective my my family's per like it is i there are now folks on social media that do nothing but spend their time picking apart posts. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand that. And let, let me back up a little bit. There are folks out there that are just, the only posts they make are correcting the ones that they, if there's a spelling error, if there's something that goes against, like it is kind of like the Facebook police Yet it's the social media police, really. Hmm. And they can be even friends of our own, where they've all of a sudden come forward and they they don't ever comment on anything until you make a mistake. Yep. Then they come out of the woodwork and go, hey, I fact-checked that. And you just kind of go, really? Um, wow. Because that was just my opinion. But apparently we're not allowed to give that anymore. So, right, right. You're, you're not allowed to have an opinion, right? You're not yeah. allowed to. And it's, it is where, listen, the, the social media today is about getting attention, right? Yes. And it's, it's the youth of today want to get attention. You're somehow we're valued based on the amount of acknowledgements we get or about the, the attention that we're garnered. That's the value of our personalities. And that's part of this, this, the challenge we have in society right now is because you, you, you want to be, it's one thing to be an artist and to really, you know, to, to achieve and to be creative and, and to, to achieve success because other people admire the work you do. But admiration comes from so many different areas and, and those that simply get their hands dirty and those that simply do, I mean, I, I, when I'm, when I'm in a store, for instance, with my kids and there's somebody going and cleaning the garbage or doing, or cleaning the bathroom, you know, this happened the other day, the person's in there cleaning the bathroom and, and Jack's like, well, what, what are they doing? I said, they're cleaning the bathroom. That's one of the most important jobs in this entire building is to make sure this place is clean. And this person's doing an important job. The smile across that person's face was priceless because nobody says that about the guy cleaning the bathroom, right? But I want my kids to understand that you have to value all the people doing all the work, not just the people that are sitting there when they're white ties. That's why there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, this, this whole thing happening over at Twitter has been phenomenal to me because not only did Elon just can a bunch of people and then he's turned around saying, listen, here's our new future. And if you don't want to work here, I'll give you three months severance. Go for it. Just, yep. just say bye-bye because a picture I recently saw, like he just posted of them doing a coding workshop mm -hmm. that it looked to me like all the guys in there, these were the, the oddballs, the, the, you remember the ones that Steve Jobs used to look at, the rejects, the oddballs, the, the, the ones that think differently. That's what was in that room. Like, that's what he wants. He wants the, he wants those guys that really want to try to make a difference and, 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 and don't have any other point of view other than I'm willing to work as hard as I can to build a great product and make a difference with this product. That's what I want to do. Not because I went to some Ivy league school and I got a great job, right? You, you know, I was hearing the numbers over at Google average salary at Google is like over $200,000 a year. Um, and the average workforce over there is uh, the average workload is like 20 to 30 hours a week, maybe. Right. You have guys <laughs> that are, that are working over here, like doing two jobs, working for one company and Google. And able to get both jobs done, especially when they didn't have to be on site anymore. Like all of a sudden they're working from home and they're able to do that. Google has a yeah, hundred some odd thousand employees. I don't know what it is. It's a huge amount of people because they had this philosophy, this idea. We just, we're just going to hire all the best people and let them just work on stuff. And if it works great, if it doesn't, they just keep working and you're never penalized for doing something wrong. That's, that's fine. There's an interesting philosophy in that, but the amount of money they're going to lay off 10% of their employees probably. That's 10,000 people, 10,000 people for just a small little workforce thing, right? But 
and not that they need to because they're cash, they still have the cash flowing in to do it, but they're trying to show that they're doing the right thing. The problem is it won't be the right people. Like I think, um, what is it? Facebook might be going through another round of layoffs that's going to be white collar. Yeah. They're getting rid of white collars, right? White collar people because it, that is what needs to happen. Like these companies have just gotten so bloated. People need to realize you don't just go to school and all of a sudden get this cushy little job and that's your life. You know, well, what did you get your degree in? But I got my degree in like in like liberal basket weaving. Okay, so fine. And now I'm over at Google. I'm in charge of making sure that the posters on the wall, there literally is a guy at, at Facebook who had a printing press um, and then like literally his job was making posters to go on the wall. I, mean, I don't know how much he got paid, but he, that's what his job. Like make, make, the, make the inspirational posters that go on the wall of Facebook. Like let's get back down to the grounded basics of, <coughs> excuse me, of life. <coughs> you know, it, it's, um, it's, it's, um, we, we were this morning when I woke up and I was kind of fired up and we talked a little bit about being uh, present and um, it's an interesting anomaly in our relationships now where, what do we, what do we need to do? We, we're going to be around our friends and family, but what do we need to do? We got to take a picture because we got to share it and we got to show people if you're involved in social media at all, which I, I'm get, I, I kind of get it. And we've seen this evolution in numbers. We've seen, um, you know, in, unless you're, uh, I don't know, scantily clad, um, there's really no, no reason to, to, go down the the road of attracting more followers um, because it really does. I, I have friend requests every day where they have no posts, but there's 40 followers because they're not wearing any clothes. I get it. Okay. So let's move on from that. But if, how, how do I get those? How do I get those friend requests? I, I don't get any of those. <laughs> I don't, this I, don't is, um, I, I, I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, what, what, what's going on here? Thanksgiving. Why you and not me, Corey? Huh? Right. I don't know. I don't know. It's just my, my nature. Um, Thanksgiving has been all about us being together and being present with our family and friends. And I think that it's interesting that in, out of all of the other days in the, in the, in the calendar, we're not doing that. We can go to an event now and people are more interested in taking the pictures and, and making a video at an event than they are with the actual people that are sitting around in front of a fire and enjoying each other's company in person. Like it, 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 it makes me crazy that we have gone from let's enjoy this moment to if I don't me. capture it and if I don't make a video, then it's not important and I can't share it with my friends. You know, we have so separated ourselves and our goal, it seems to our, to me, our, our new goal is now to, um, we, we want to separate ourselves from our own realities. We all have amazing lives and I don't care if you're struggling with your work, your home life, you have an amazing life. And what do we want to do? Social media is encouraging us to compete. And say it says to us that, no, you don't have an amazing life. You have to show us. You have to prove to us that you have an amazing life. So Pixar didn't engaging, happen. Yeah. In, unless you're engaging, unless you're taking pictures and sharing on social media, you you guys with kids, Matson, Jesse, I mean, they're, your kids do amazing stuff every day. Can you imagine following them around with a camera all the time going, that was really cool. You have to do that again because unless I take a picture of it and share it on Facebook, it's not that cool. Have you been no. listening to my wife's conversations lately? <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> you know <clears throat> what your kids do and it is amazing for you. How did we get to the point where now we, if we don't share it and tell somebody how amazing we are, we're not amazing. But it's also a difference between reality and what's fake. It's just like pictures. We well, can I think it, it, Photoshop whatever we want on Facebook mm -hmm. to make people think that we're this people. 
Right. Or yeah, like the people that take photos and then clean up the photos before they post them, you know, and get rid of the wrinkles and all that kind of stuff. It's all the, yeah, it's, it's now what's interesting is, you know, so I just kind of wrote down a phrase here, personal gaslighting. It's like yeah. we're gaslighting yes. ourselves. Yes. They know. We're gaslighting ourselves and just, and just building this reality, this, this alternative reality, you know, uh, that, that reinforces who we think we are. So we go back and look at those pictures. Like I can go back and look at all the pictures my wife's taken of all the kids all the time. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, look at those kids. We're always happy and all that kind of stuff. People come and say, wow, your kids are amazing. You're doing such a good job. I'm like, buddy, let me tell you. <laughs> you know, right, right. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, first off, it was t- it was it was 35 minutes to get that one photo because they were all jumping all over the place. And I think we took 300 photos and found like the one right right one that actually came up and goes on Facebook. But it was also two hours just to get them out the front door to be able to get dressed to do that. Right. And then it was another hour of them crying when I beat them after they didn't. You know, it's like I don't beat my kids, by the way. Um, but it's that that the the whole concept and idea, I mean, that these little snapshot photos. And it's interesting because, you you know, my mom sent me a whole bunch of old photos and, and scrapbooks and stuff that she didn't want to have when she moved to Florida. And looking through those and these are these like it, it's kind of cool looking through old photos because you didn't have tons of photos of everything happening. You had little select photos that got popped up every once in a while. And you go, I remember when that happened. It was like, it's, you're really enjoying the memory of that moment. Mm-hmm. Now, Facebook and Instagram, all these kind of doves, they do the same thing to you, right? It pops up on your, on your computer. It pops up on your phone. Like, Hey, look at these memories. And you go, Oh, that's kind of cool. But every day, right. There's a memory. And, and, but again, it's this, it's this personal gaslighting. You are, you're creating a false narrative because what you're forgetting is, is all the struggle you had that day. And when you forget the struggles, you forget the work, you tend to, um, uh, I think it's a, a lie to yourself about what it actually took to get there. And it's important for us to always remember the struggles. It's important for us to always remember the, the hardships because that's what makes us strong and better and, 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 and helps us to think more clearly about what next decision we want to make. Wow. Yeah. Um, you, you had said a little bit ago, you know, value the people that do the work and that, that isn't, um, there, there's so much behind that as well. Uh, I posted a picture a little while ago of a picture that I took at SEMA and it was just a selfie, you know, that whole on the fly in the moment, taking a picture. And, um, I was going through some images today and I kind of thought, wow, like there are, there, you know, there's this, this, uh, recently, um, uh, motor trend has decided to stop publishing four wheeler magazine, which was kind of the last of the print rags. I mean, uh, no more JP, no more, you know, back in the day we had hot rodder and car craft and truck in and all like, those are all gone. And so, it's very interesting to me that how, how things evolve, how people involve, uh, evolve, and how we we come across people in our lives that we don't understand the impact that they may make uh, until much later in life. And everybody has an influence on us. And I don't know that it's it's recognizable at the time. It's just it's at the time. You you know you 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 take an image. And who knows how, what that looks like later in life. I I don't know. It's Thanksgiving. Again, it's the holiday season. And I think everybody struggles through this, including myself. Um, families are a huge importance, as are our friends. And I don't know. We go through these next couple months and things are... Things are different. Perspectives change. Things change. People change. And the lighting changes too. Like it's all yeah, dark. It's, it's like all... it's dark here. <laughs> it's it dark. is actually dark. <laughs> it really is dark. Oh my god. Um it, it it is interesting. I mean, this is and for all of our listeners, you know, we're just we're we're just thinking about what we're thankful for. And and here's what it comes down to is is it truly is a special thing that we're in a world that we're in, that we're in the industry we're in. Um, and we're able to just spend time with, with, 
with our friends. I mean, uh, you know, Corey, what you get to do and travel and see so many of your friends so often um, and go to the events and, and do all that kind of stuff and be able to do that and not be stuck in the office. I mean, you, you look at Corey's bio at moderncheaper.com and it tells the story of how many years you spent, uh, you know, in the corporate life and finally getting to follow your passion because you were, I mean, you were a passionate Jeeper for years and years and years, you know, 20 something years before you actually had a chance to, to join and jump in, in the industry. And, um, and so that, that joy of being able to do that, I, I sit here every day and I'm like, you know, the, the thrill I have of being able to come here, I, my post yesterday was about Mondays, right? And it was like, Hey, you know, usually Mondays, there's a whole idea of Monday blues. I don't think we don't ever have the Monday blues here at Metal Cloak, right? We come in, we show up and, and we, um, and we, we enjoy what we're doing because we get to build more product. We get to ship more product. We get to talk to more customers, right? Um, it really just isn't. We're excited to do what we're doing. Sometimes at the end of the week, you're a little tired, been worn out. It's been a tough week. You get through it all, right? But, you know, we don't sit there and go, oh, my God, like, you know. And I think we're pretty fortunate as a company not to have a bunch of employees that are going, well, oh, man, I got to go to work today. Oh, man, this sucks, right? Like, it just wouldn't be good. You know, the error rate, we have, a, we constantly monitor the error rate on errors and ship and stuff. And it's so super low. And that lowness is a testament to the fact that our employees really enjoy what they're doing and they pay attention to what they're doing. Um, and they, they know what they're trying to fulfill for the customer. And, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, Metal Cloak's slogan is, it's your Jeep only better, right? It's kind of changing to it's your rig only better because we have Jeep, Ram, Toyota, Bronco. But I once looked at Armored Works LLC, which is our corporate company. And, uh, and I threw a slogan out for that and it was, it's your life only better. And that's kind of the, the mission of what we're doing at Armored Works, right? It's, it's where we, we are here because we're all trying to make a better life and better life for people and a better life for our employees, a better life for our, our team, a better life for anybody who's, who's working hard to do it. So this Thanksgiving, I'm just thankful for, for one, everybody that that's here. I'm thankful for you guys. I'm thankful for everybody I've had a chance to work with. Um, for everybody in our team that helps to it and touches our customers who help our customers. I'm thankful for all of our customers. I mean, uh, it's an amazing, amazing group of people out there who have done so much. And despite what's happening economically in the world, despite what's happening uh, in all other challenges, they're still going and they're still, and, I'm, and I'll also say I'm very thankful for Jeep uh, for, for making a, a product that we can all get behind. I'm thankful for for other platforms, Ram, Bronco. I mean, it's just thankful for Ford for making a rig that needs a lot of work uh, <laughs> that, we can, that we can improve upon. Um, you know, just thankful to, to all of these. And, and, and really am thankful to you guys for, for what you do. Cause it's, it's, it's unprecedented. Um, you know, how you, how you impact the country as you go across and the people you meet. Um, it's important. And, and well, this we, podcast, we, I mean, people do listen to this podcast and people do pay attention to what we say, even when we're not talking about Jeeps, Jeeping or Jeepers. Well, those, you know, the, the six people that are, that are listening to us, um, <laughs> following us, um, we, we definitely are thankful to them. Um, we, we get to, we, we have an amazing, amazing life. Uh, and I, um, don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm very grateful to to everybody that we come across, that we get to help, that we get to talk to. Um, you know, it, it's funny. I think people should stop following um, social media. Oh, what? Wait, I mean, no, don't stop following us. <laughs> but in general, it's kind of like watching the news. You know, we've talked about this. And I, I mentioned to Jesse this morning, I said, you know what? Isn't it funny that it's kind of like watching actors anymore in any kind of real information? And and I and I have my my favorite news, you know, outlets and that kind of thing, but it's really weird anymore because they're paid as actors making movies. These people are are high dollar um they're 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 there to put a face and and get you to trust them and then whatever comes out of their mouth you kind of want to believe it so it's kind of weird it, it's kind of like watching a movie a lot of times um and i think that's unfortunate because then how do we how do we get the real information um 
fortunately, Jesse and I are, are, we, a lot of people reach out to us. We get a lot of emails, we get a lot of questions, and they just want to know kind of what's, what the, what's really going on. And you know what? That's really cool. If they're going to call and ask us stuff, that there's that layer of trust there. And I so appreciate that because mm -hmm. we're not going to, we don't sugarcoat anything. And, and the folks that know us, um, it's why Metal Cloak has chosen to support us over what we do. People used to get up on the CTI trader and go, well, we're not a, we don't have any Metal Cloak parts. Mm, okay. Yeah. That's I fine. Realize that there's no requirement here. We're here to help you build the best rig that you want. And let's look at what that looks like. So I don't know. It's been a, it's, it's Thanksgiving. So it's been a really roller coaster. You know, I've, we've, we have our families to deal with. You all out there, our listeners and followers have your own families to deal with. And um, I think it's huge that Metal Cloak decides that, hey, they should give back. And what else more can we, can we do? I mean, I, I do think it's a little interesting that we, the, it seems the nature of the game anymore is um, we're going to make some requirements. We're going to have our folks, followers, friends do things that um, in order to receive something in return, right? Um, and I think that the, the, the times are changing. We want to do less because when we're asked to do stuff, it's those terms and conditions. I, I haven't, I haven't agreed to those terms and conditions yet. But you did. <laughs> did anybody hear the subliminal terms and conditions that if you even start listening to this podcast, you agree to? Just That's by right. clicking play, you agree to our terms and conditions. You've maybe. agreed to put up with us. That's yes. right. And all the underlying print. I know who you are. I do. <laughs> We just captured your IP address. You'll be receiving a bill from us shortly. Oh, <laughs> uh, there, yeah. there it, it, it is. Speaking of which, right? It, it is interesting. But speaking of which, we um we we had a giveaway. Yes, yes. We had a giveaway going on, and you agreed to certain terms and conditions by joining that giveaway. <laughs> Did you That's read right. the fine print? You, whether you Did do you... it or not. <clears throat> but we had uh, several hundred entries, <clears throat> and um and we needed to um we need to choose the winner. So Corey's got his randomizer set up and, uh, and he's going to go through and hit that button. And then we're going to figure out who won the $5,000 giveaway. I can't see it. it no, it I, I, and I did that just so that folks would understand oh, that this is a number phone. that okay. I'm, I'm actually coming up with. Um, yep. I've put our, the number of registered entries that um, we've gone through and, and um, calculated as, as viable entries. Um, it is literally a number generator. So it's just going to give me a number. I don't even have the list of participants. So I've got the, see on my end, I've got the spreadsheet up. And as soon as he gives me the numbers, we'll look at who it is and see if you did it right. So the number it gave me is 12. The number 12. Okay. We're going to 12. Entry number 12. Entry number 12 is Julia M. I won't give a full last name. Julia M. We will, of course, send you an email and let you know. All right, let's see. She has a 2013 Wrangler a JKU. Cool. She first word was correct. Shelf Road, Eureka, Jesse Combs, Balance, Lugnut. Is that all correct? I think that's correct. Okay, and bonus word, peak. Oh, but she didn't give us a sentence. That's okay. There were some really cool sentences we'll read read out. So because everybody knows we kind of said, hey, throw together a sentence beyond it. That being said, she did do everything correctly. Um, that sentence was optional. So she wins. So she has a 2013 Wrangler JQ. Congratulations, Julia M. Um, you will be contacted. And then if all works out, we'll have her on next week's show so we can actually tell her about what she won That's and awesome. go through that like we did. So um, we will, but congratulations to Julia. Again, we'll send you an email follow up. Um, and, uh, you are our $5,000 giveaway winner. Uh, this, Gary, this is where you, you producer, Gary, you put the confetti, <laughs> right? <laughs> so for the video, so it's a celebration. That's awesome. So it's awesome. I, I love it. It's an old, it's an old JK. I mean, it's funny. I say an old JK. It's an old, JK it's an old right? Jeep, you know, 2012, it's, it's 10 years old. Almost 10 years old. 
Uh, and uh, it was cool. That was cool. Now, um, there is a bonus. I'm going to, why don't you pick another one? Okay. So I'm going to hit up generate wow. 60. 60. Okay. So 60. Let's see. 60. And oh, he even did a sentence too. Okay, cool. So 60 because he did the bonus sentence and he did um, the bonus word, which was peak. Uh, Darius, Darius S. Uh, we'll say his last name again. It's Darius. I'll send you an email. He also he has a 2017 Jeep Wrangler JKU. Nice. He said all the words correctly. He is going to get a bonus. I'll send him something. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe we'll get a uh, I'll have to look at it. But I think we could do a Rubicon poster, which just went live, everybody. If you've seen the Rubicon posters, they're live on our website. Um, pretty cool posters, all built in cooperation with Carter Tracks, who did all the data. And then we designed something based on that data, which includes this legend of all these different locations that you've heard about. Walker Hill million dollar rock whatever and if you want to if you actually if you're if you're listening to this on the podcast you can actually go to the youtube video and that poster exists right behind matson's shoulder oh yes it is it's right there so that's a version <laughs> of it that is was done on canvas that's right uh, we have yep. a few of those i have one left and i'm maybe thinking that we might give that away on our 200th episode maybe there you if go. i'm not greedy there you about go. it but then you have the same one in a 24 by 36 uh, actual poster on high quality poster print, matte print um, that you can use. And it comes in a tube, so it's all nice and cool, you know, and it's an easy gift if you want to give that to somebody special cool. in your life. Anyway, her sentence is, let's see. Uh, let's see what the sentence is here. Uh, this is for, or for his, there he is. By following her chosen shelf road, Jessie Combs tried to achieve the balance on the peak. When she had a eureka moment, I lost lug nuts on my wheels. However, I prefer the latter ones. Jesse, uh, what, what, I, I prefer the what? The latter one. Jessie Combs is striving for a life. Oh, uh, this looks like there's two sentences here. Jessie Combs is striving for the life balance. She tried to reach her peak, following her own very dangerous shelf road. It sounded like she was nuts. But it was her eureka moment. I was very sad we lost such a powerful woman. Maybe she wouldn't lost her lug nuts at her wheels. She would still be with us. Aww. Very cool. Well, yeah, there is. Cool. That's awesome. So we got some cool, we got a couple of cool presents for you, buddy. We'll send you. And just because we're doing it, why don't you pick another number? All right. Let's go. Let's see. How about um 32? 32. 32. Okay. We got for 32. 32, Kevin H, 2017 Wrangler Unlimited. Another 2017 Wrangler Unlimited. All the words are correct. Bonus words there. And his sentence, one day driving down a shelf road, I was looking at a mountain peak and thinking how great Jesse Combs was when my Jeep started losing its balance in an obstacle, on an obstacle, but then realized, Eureka, I forgot to tighten up my lug nut. There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. There's some good creative um, uh, um, sentences on here. As Jessie Combs made her way on the shelf road to the mountain peak, she had a eureka moment when she realized her Jeep wheel balance issue. That's okay. That sounds about right. There was one. What was just one? Uh, I'm watching you. Just this one's wheel Jeep nut, Eureka Springs. Jessie Combs wheeled her Jeep nut, her Jeep lug nut to Eureka Springs and visited the peak of Mount Ober, Obera Magaru before heading north to spend the balance of the weekend on a climbing trip at Shelf Road. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Eureka, I shouted when I saw a glistening light at the peak of the mountain. I took off like Jesse Combs up the Shelf Road. When I got there, I discovered a glistening <laughs> light was just the lug nut, and I reminded myself life is about balance. Oh, wow. I love that one. That's Andrew Shibley. Uh, just I love that sentence. Andrew, you're going to get something, too. So That's I should probably cool. mark these guys as, as ones that are. So we had that one. We had, um, you said number 32 was our last one, right? Yep. An H. And then we had um, Arian. There he is. And then 12 was our winner, winner, winner. Is that right? So we got. 12 was our winner. We did Darius, and then we did Kevin. 
We did. And that was it, right? Yeah, that was it. Cool. Julia. And then I just chose that last one, Andrew. Cool. Well, hey, congratulations to everybody. And thank you for being part of that game. It was fun. You know, we do our 5,000 cool. giveaway. Um, that man, was man, fun. I, and yeah. I like the way we did it. And, and, uh, uh, while you were while you were talking, I, I was thinking about um, you know we've the last few days Jesse and I have spent a lot of time in the garage and trying to um, you know it's it's kind of funny because it comes down to when we're home you know we're basically we just sleep until about four o'clock and then we get up for two hours we eat and we go back to bed um, <laughs> yeah so about that so the last wow. uh, this last weekend we spent a lot of time in the garage and we got the adventure rack systems. Uh, rack on on Jesse's rig on her new JL and guys this is the first time that either of us we you know we've 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 marketed the product we've seen the product we've known it's a great product but to install it uh, I got to tell you that if you're you're listening to us and you've got a a newer rig and you're looking at, at an adventure rack um wow the the actual engineering in between how the plates are done and the catwalk and all of that in these new jeeps um again i this is my the first time i'd ever installed one at jesse as well and I, we were both blown away at the it's a it's a new day it's a new day in jeep and to get stuff to be solid and fit behind some of these quote unquote plastic panels um how do you make that work and i was always curious in fact i didn't even know some of these panels were plastic to be honest um and we put this rack on and it is it's a beautiful work of art man that engineers put together it is it's crazy and i you know being a mechanical guy we've done a lot of suspension work i've done all kinds of suspension lifts and and work over the years um yep suspension metal cloak has always had it figured out like there's no there's no doubt about that but all of a sudden you start to go well we're going to put this rack on it's going to attach and we're going to be able to stand on it and put 850 pounds up on top of this thing you kind of go really because i've seen some racks mm -hmm. and I, and we've seen some stuff that has been used out in the in the field and we just kind of go wow wow what's with that dimple in the side of your jeep where this rack was penetrating and literally the the entire front frame will flex I, i'm like yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes guys um not because i i stand behind the brand and and metal cloak um gets to 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 pay some of my expenses when we go to these events i wouldn't stand behind these products if they weren't the real deal that rack is amazing and i'm i'm blown away i'm just I, I, well, I don't know what else to say. Like the fitment to have cross members that go the length of a JL attached to a rear bumper in a single point and then come up and tie into this catwalk frame. You kind of think, well, how's that going to work? And then once it all comes together and you can tighten it up and you can, you can literally twist the frame of the Jeep up with how you tighten these collars. That's how strong these tubes are. So just, just a shout out to ARS and the engineers that put together an amazing product. Well, thank you. Thank you. Chris, Chris and the team over there have done phenomenal. They just finished up the four by E version, which was a challenge to try to get something that had the same amount of strength, but being mounted around the, the, yeah. the electric, the, the charging port, right? Yeah. That yeah. cowl has a whole different, um, space for that spot and yeah. and, to, yeah. and, and and you know what hey you guys you don't want to have a rack on there that's totally fine this cowl just having the catwalk on there you're gonna go oh i had no idea it, it provides so much more stability to the entire jeep it's it's amazing I got my keys are being delivered here from my my trucks and say just we just put a little announcement here we just put a test set of four and a half inch coils uh, on my JT. Oh, of course, now I feel like the 38s are too small. <clears throat> <laughs> right. That's the problem. Like, yeah, like, I'm like, keep those three and a half. So I'm going to, after we test this, I'm going to put those three and a half back on. 
Yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's for just a little bit, a little bit too big. My kids are already gonna be like struggling to get in. Um, it's, yeah, but it's awesome. So, it, yeah, you, what you're saying is absolutely true. Uh, and I and I and, and the, the, the team over there they did a great job and how they designed that that one. It's funny. There was a guy who did a, a little short video that he had just installed the overcab, which has the same kind of mounting system. Uh, onto his gladiator he referred to it you know in his innocence he referred to it as he just got himself an exo cage he, he, well, he, I, got, I got himself a, i got a roll cage which yeah you know what as much as say a rock hard cage is going to save your life but it's going to work once but it's going to save your life that's true to about the, the strength of this cage is such that yep. we've already had some customers who have rolled their rigs Mm -hmm. out and like the rig the a frame right there's no no a pillar damage on the window frame right the easiest thing to get damaged because of how that how strong that front tube is so you are essentially putting on um a a a, a, a heavy duty rack that's an unofficial exo cage yeah um, absolutely that is, that is we, going to help your rig in those cases we we never wanted our our podcast and i don't mean for this for our followers to be an infomercial but um, again, we were going to support and 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 say good things about the products that we like, and this was one of those instances where you kind of go, oh, you know, for the Gladiator that I've been I've, I've been running the ARS <laughs> rack on the back of the Gladiator, and it's been totally fine. But it is one of the first iterations of the rack as well, and that has evolved into in a, into a couple of different versions. So, again. A rack is a rack when you're talking about um, what you're able to do with it in the back of a gladiator. But when you start talking about a JL, um, it's 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 a little bit more. Uh, how do I say? It's a lot more integrated into what you have going on. Whereas you know we're talking about the back of a pickup with a gladiator. What are you going to do back there? Yeah. Right. Well, that has evolved as well. And and the new ARS stuff. If you've not looked, go take a look. Well, well, thank you for that, Corey. I really appreciate it. Um, now we're just going to clip that out section out. We're going to put it out there as a testimonial video. Like, yeah, this this <laughs> this customer, Corey and Jesse from Montrose, Colorado. This is what they have to say about the ARS. Yeah, that's just right. installed that's right. on our new. Um, now, uh, I, I I do have. I need some advice though, because I asked this question earlier. I thought, wait, wait, wait. We should talk about this because I've done this little survey. Like, so it, when I did when I was on the trip and I had the blown out tires, I had my Craftsman tools. And my Craftsman power tools were the ones that I had bought for the race car. Like they were they were good enough for the race car back in the day. But like anything, we had this discussion about batteries and we can go down that path before that the lithium batteries just don't hold a charge anymore. So they go, oh, man, that sucks. So I'm like, okay, it's time to replace all this. Now I happen to have a couple of Ryobis at home because I just happen to have those. But so my survey question has been, and I've kind of asked a few people this, and I'm asking you now is Ryobi, DeWalt or Milwaukee? So <laughs> we um, we don't have a, a Lowe's here in town. Um, we have a Home Depot. And, and I've always been a fan of the Ryobi brand when I was working on stuff on a kind of a small scale. Um, it was the inexpensive entry level. Um, you could find a lot of tools and that kind of thing. Um, I still have some Ryobi products including some stuff that, that folks have seen us using the CTI trailer where they have like a fan and a water pump and, and it'll blow air at us to keep us kind of cool. Um, I have some DeWalt tools that I always kind of considered those were the, I don't know, the top shelf? topper of the shelf, the, the semi-professional stuff. Milwaukee and DeWalt, I consider equals. Um, I, I, I'm, I don't have a professional shop. So when I found DeWalt stuff on sale, I would buy it. But I have become more of a rigid fan. Oh. Um, rigid is the Home Depot brand, just like Lowe's has their own brand. But rigid has been very good as far as their warranty service. Their batteries are warrantied for life, hmm. um, as are the Walt and Milwaukee and all that, but I don't have a Milwaukee store or a DeWalt store. So if I blow something up, whether it's a tool or a battery or whatever, I can just go to my local Home Depot They're They are rigid. So they'll replace it right there on the spot. Um, 
the majority of my tools have become rigid based. Again, I this is a Ford, Chevy, Jeep, Subaru. Like, what do you? What's your mm. preference? Um, I like the rigid stuff. There's a whole bunch of tools and a whole bunch of variations. The Milwaukee stuff tends to get a little bit more expensive, and everybody will say, "Well, you get what you pay for." Yeah, yeah. But if I blow something up, who is going to be my Milwaukee person that comes to my house? And that's not going to happen. Whereas I can go to Home Depot get my replacement tool and be done. So, yeah. Interesting. Well, that makes a definite, definite argument for that. Um, the, the, the interesting thing for me, like we replaced everything. One of the, the, one of the reasons I have a couple of Ryobi tools is because we used to have Ryobi throughout the, the operation here at Metal Cloak. All those tools got taken, put on a cart and given free to employees because we replaced everything with Milwaukee. Um, and I don't know if it's a thing about a battery life or whatever, you know, what, whatever reason that would just became, it was, it was easier, better to use simpler, a whole easier to handle lighter weight, whatever. Yep. Um, but so, that, so my thought process was why I threw that in the mix. And of course, DeWalt being as good as it is, but usually it's like, you know, I know Aaron is a bunch of DeWalt because he, he always visits the big DeWalt sale at Easter Jeep Safari every year. <laughs> so I think, yeah. And, it, and it, so yeah, and and literally the um, winter four by four jamboree in St. George, the Dewalt local dealer shows up, and the majority of the tools that I have that are Dewalt were bought through that that true value Dewalt dealer because they were, you know, you you again, it's it's pricey stuff. How often do you use it? Um, when I want to break something loose, yeah, I get out the big half inch Dewalt impact um but you know what i have a rigid gun that's the exact same power but it's funny i tend to beat on the dewalt stuff a little bit more because i feel like it should perform mm -hmm. better mm -hmm. but really the rigid stuff uh, all of her ars stuff all of the stuff i do i always go to that bag and um and now that rigid is like they they've made some really cool stuff off of their little battery, I could have an adapter that can charge two USBs and a USB-C outlet. It's also a 180 watt inverter built into this little thing. I can plug a AC power cord into my battery. Like, oh wow, they're doing some some innovative things. Mm -hmm. But I well, think it, all the companies eventually they all come around. They all come and around all that. So yeah. what's well, interesting, and I appreciate throwing another variable into my decision making, because, you know, around, I've said this before on the podcast, since I don't have a big house with a big yard, well, I have a big house, but not a big yard. Um, like my yard stuff is all black and Decker. I, it's all I need, right? I got yep. three or four black and Decker batteries. I keep it going. I've got the small black and Decker chainsaw. I've got the black and Decker blower. I've got the black and Decker weed eater. I got the black and Decker trimmer all in the same battery system. It's super easy and it works. I do have the Toro uh, blower and sucker, right? The big yep. vacuum for when I have to do all that. I got that, but that's not, unfortunately, nobody makes, I don't think they make the vacuum system um, on a non-corded, on a, on, a, on a wireless version yet. It's all corded, so that's fine, whatever. Um, but so, but when, I, when it comes to being in a situation where I'm out in the middle of no place, I need to change a tire and have some real tools. That's what I'm trying to right. replace. So I'm trying to just say, okay, good. Let's put some good thought into this. Part of my personal Christmas present to myself this, this Black Friday week is to find some deals and stuff. And now you threw another variable in it. So have I come out of this conversation <laughs> with, a, with a decision? I don't know. But it is interesting what you say that, that the, old, the whole thing about Craftsman back in the day when there was a Sears and a Craftsman, is that you could walk into any store, yeah, and you could, or you walk into it and you could just hand over your broken tool and they grab you a replacement. It may not have been a brand new one. Like sometimes they usually had a bucket under the table of, of like replacement wrenches or whatever if you broke something, but they'd hand it to you. Um, and that is that's it's great that Rigid has that kind of same philosophy. I don't actually know if you go over to um, Lo was it Lowe's or that has Craftsman now. Um, or is it Home yeah, Deeper I don't even has, know that really. Home Deeper I think it is Craftsman. One of those Maybe two. It's, has Home Deeper. I, it's it's a, and again, um, a shout out to all of our jobbers and our shops that use professional quality tools. Um, and there'll be a story coming up about some of those professional quality tools. Turns out I've never really had a professional set of drill bits, and I always thought, who cares? Like, how much difference can a drill bit make? Well. Our friend uh, Christian at Lunas Off Road has had uh, 
Ordered. gifted me <laughs> a, a for my birthday when he came back out he given me a set of professional drill bits um clean cut i can't I can't remember the name of the brand name off of them but there'll be a story on modernjeeper.com about them um they are a stepped drill bit and i thought what is the big deal uh, oh my goodness a step for those bit. of you who have driven mm. through steel and yeah, I've got all of the little Harbor Freight little step bits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I threw those away about every time I use them because they're <laughs> right. just dull. Um, so these drill bits are a couple of hundred dollars. Wow. And I thought, they can't make that big a difference. Oh, when I want to drill through some steel that's an inch in thick, like literally it is, and I'm through the steel. Uh huh? Like, how is that even? Wait a minute. Is this wood? No, I don't understand. Like, it's the real stuff. And I get it. Snap on, Matco, um, all of them. They, they, they all make really good stuff. But the reason that shops deal with them is because when they break something, that truck comes around once a week and they can get it replaced just like that. Right. And they don't have to go to a shop. We're, yeah, you mean the you mean the the tool crack shop? The, the, yes, yeah. the tool <laughs> cracked like, truck that shows hey, up. Yes, we're very we're very happy that you come around so that all of our mechanics have um have debt and have to uh have to keep, keep working, working in order to be right. off those yeah. tools. Yep. You have, you have your master mechanic with a half a million dollars in tools. It is, mm -hmm. is you know, it adds up. Yeah, but yeah. It, it, it it does say a lot about it. it. Does say a lot about it. By the way, just to correct it, it is it is Lowe's. Lowe's has the Craftsman brand now. Okay, gotcha. Um, gotcha. So, uh, but yes, it's um, well, good. I appreciate it. I, mean, I appreciate all that. That's so I have to figure out what I'm going to get. And that's part of my my Christmas present is nice a nice new tool bag with some real stuff. I did, however, just buy an adapter because the kid's battery on his on the power the power wheels. Um, Oh, uh, that's a big battery. deal. The the eighteen volt power adapters for yeah. the yeah, the Ryo, and they're specifically for a Ryobi, right? So I'm, right. I, it's like yep. it just that battery died, like the thing won't charge anymore. <laughs> so pulled it off, pulled it off, put the Ryobi in there, and boom, <laughs> kid's got his brake back now. I've had two of these things with the battery goes. I'm like, that just then it's way too expensive. It's like more to buy the battery than it is to buy the damn rig in the first place well, we'll have to talk before christmas of course we'll have to do a podcast on the um how come my kids uh little electric cart goes 40 miles an hour now <laughs> right the <laughs> the um the the other thing too and by the way if any of our listeners are are in the rc world um I've decided that that's probably what I'm going to get in them is each a, like a real RC, the type that they can actually go beat up on and it rolls over and it doesn't break because it's not from target. Mm -hmm. um, and so or that's like, that, that's going to be the major present for them. I think they, they love them. They love it. They want to play with mine. I'm like, no, you can't. Sorry. Yeah, we, yeah, we'll, we'll have to talk some more. Yeah. 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 All right. Hey listeners. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Uh, anything to add before we wrap up? I think we're good, buddy. Another great episode. We went all over the place as usual and uh, thankful. We are thankful and thankful to all of you and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Hopefully, Thanksgiving. Um, whether you like football or not, I'm not a, personally, I'm not a big fan of football on Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of playing football in the front yard on Thanksgiving, but not of sitting around watching TV. Yeah, it's just not what we do on Thanksgiving. Um, do by us, the way, do our, us a favor. Yeah, do us a favor. Take a picture and then be engaged with the folks that you're with right right take a picture oh and by the way um even though our sale will be going through thanksgiving or black friday there's plenty of time after thanksgiving if i have a low sales number on thanksgiving i'm actually happier than if i have a high sales number because it means less people were shopping you're spending more time with your family and friends and thinking about being thankful um as opposed to uh putting dollars into our employees pockets because that could happen on friday saturday sunday or even monday um so for all of us out there thank you so much for being a part of this for all the modern jeepers we love you um and uh, we appreciate you taking the time to listen to us and sharing us around and for all those who entered yes big hearts and for all of those who entered uh, and were part of the five thousand dollar giveaway thank you thank you for making it fun 
uh, and for having a good time with it. And we'll reach out to each of you, each of our winners. With that being said, you know how to reach us. Matt's at medical.com, Corey at medical.com, Jesse medical.com. By the way, keep an eye out. The calendar will be hitting the website soon. And uh, with all the cool photos for the year. Oh, and new dates, new dates. Check out modern Jeeper adventures.com. Dates are coming. I yes, was yes. For days. Yes. So they're new out, dates, guys. <laughs> new dates, new dates. The next available next event open is going to be our, our modern Jeeper or is our death Valley, which I'm thinking about coming out and bringing uh, Josh yes, this time. So that yes. way Josh has a chance to be a part of this. So we'll see, see how that goes. Uh, oh. We might lose him though. He's a runner. <laughs> <laughs> Leashes. We got him. All Bungie right. Boards. We got him. <laughs> they see We're going to leave Corey and Jesse in the darkness that they're there. And uh, for all of a, all of our modern jeepers out there, we'll see you on the trail. Cheers. Happy Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone.